The famous doomsday clock shows 100 seconds before the apocalypse. And it won't happen because of some higher power, but upon the initiative of a human being. We've never come so close to the edge of the abyss. Nuclear war. One more step and the history of mankind is over. And unfortunately, current world problems, personal ambitions of some politicians, and a lack of desire to seek compromises between governments can make this last fatal step real. And then, the Earth will face the third world nuclear war, in which there will be no winners. Imagine that someone pressed the red button and nuclear missiles got in the air. We will show you that humanity would stand no chance. To understand what nuclear war means, let's take a look at the power of nuclear weapons and their stockpiles in different countries. There are two different types of genres of nuclear weapons. Strategic nuclear weapons are the big ones that are pointed at certain targets and are launched on intercontinental ballistic missiles and submarine and cruise missiles. Tactical nuclear weapons are non-strategic and are used in smaller, more mobile applications. They work based on the fission of uranium or plutonium nuclei and are generally smaller in explosive power. These types of weapons include gravity bombs, short-range missiles, artillery shells, depth charges, landmines, and some small torpedoes. At the same time, the fusion of deuterium and tritium releases 10 times more energy. So thermonuclear bombs are much more powerful than uranium or plutonium bombs. What's even more frightening is that there's no theoretical limit to the size and yield of a thermonuclear weapon. In 1961, in the USSR, a thermonuclear bomb with a capacity of 58 megatons was detonated on Novaya Zemla. The power of the explosion was equivalent to the explosion of 58 million tons of trinitrotoluene, or TNT. Imagine 580,000 cargo rail cars filled with TNT, all blown up simultaneously. And initially, it had to be a 100 megaton bomb. But even 58 megatons is still 10 times more powerful than all the weapons, including bombs and mines, used during World War II. So what amounts of such a deadly weapon does humanity have at the moment? More than enough. The nuclear club is a term used for the group of nations who possess thermonuclear weapons, and the leaders of this club are Russia and the United States. About 90% of all nuclear warheads are owned by these two countries. Russia has 5,977 nuclear warheads, and the US owns a total of 5,428 warheads in its military stockpiles. You can see the distribution of deadly weapons among other countries on the screen. For humanity, the situation doesn't look good. All countries that have nuclear weapons either increase their supply or leave it as it is. The only exception is the United States, and the figures only show the number of nuclear warheads intended for use atop strategic carriers with a range of several thousand kilometers. But there are also tactical nuclear munitions of small power, the TNT equivalent of which doesn't exceed a few kilotons and is often less than one kiloton. But this is still a lot. By modern standards, the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and destroyed the city can be considered a tactical nuclear weapon. Its power was no more than 15 kilotons. To compare, the Russian SS-18 Satan intercontinental ballistic missile has 10 thermonuclear warheads on board, each with a capacity of 800 kilotons. So one such warhead is 53 times more destructive than that dropped on Hiroshima. This means that one Russian missile is 530 times more deadly than the first atomic bomb. The Russians have 46 such missiles as of 2022. Besides, Russia has already developed and tested the new RS-28 Sarmat missile that will replace the Satan, and it has to be even more effective. Aside from this, they also have Topol and Yars missiles. A total of 320 missiles are located in mines or on land vehicles. Plus, there are 176 missiles on Russian nuclear submarines of the Bore, Delphin, Akula, and Kalmar classes. But that's not all. Russia has 68 strategic bombers, 
the TU-95 Bear and the TU-160, also known as the White Swan, which all carry a total of 580 nuclear cruise missiles. Hopefully it doesn't turn out to be a black swan for humanity. The United States has just about the same deadly arsenal, and now imagine that all this will be used against humanity. So how can a nuclear war begin, and how will it happen? Mankind has not experienced global horror like that during the Second World War for more than 70 years. Most of those who remembered the bombings and the fear that filled a person when everything around collapsed and burned aren't here anymore. These were times when there was no hope for even the slightest bit of medical care, and when people had to starve for weeks, months, or even years. And to keep warm, they had to burn their furniture and books. Modern people have only seen a nuclear war in computer games. Unfortunately, even some politicians don't understand all possible consequences, and this only increases the risk of nuclear conflict. This is also facilitated by the modern missile defense systems that the leading nuclear powers have. The Russian and American political elites attempted to destroy their main geopolitical enemy with a single missile strike, and avoid counterattack by hiding behind a missile defense umbrella. Here, for example, is the Russian A-135 anti-missile system. It consists of a huge four-sided pyramid with a height of 33 to 35 meters, a side length of 130 to 144 meters at the base, and 90 to 100 meters along the roof. This is the Don 2N radar station that consists of two command and control centers and up to a hundred anti-missiles of long-range and short-range interception. All of them are equipped with nuclear warheads with a yield of up to 1.4 megatons. That is almost five times more powerful than the Satan warhead. The United States has a similar system that consists of several components. First of all, this is the ground-based mid-course defense system designed to intercept ballistic missiles with 44 anti-missiles. Also, the missile defense system includes the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System that operates on warships. It's designed to destroy small and medium-range ballistic missiles. The third component is the THAAD Mobile Complex that provides advanced cover for military bases and strategic facilities from small and medium-range ballistic missile warheads entering the atmosphere. The capabilities of the complex don't allow it to hit targets in outer space, though. Both the Russians and the Americans have anti-missile defenses that can destroy up to several dozen enemy missiles, but not hundreds, so a massive nuclear strike could break through this defense. Computer simulations show that if Russia detonates even 300 of its strategic warheads over the US metropolitan areas, there'll be about 78 million fatalities in the first half hour. In addition, the entire economic infrastructure of the country will be destroyed. The electricity grid, the internet, the food distribution system, the transport network, and the healthcare system. Everything necessary to sustain normal life will disappear. And within a few months after the attack, the vast majority of the US population will fall victim to starvation, radiation sickness, and epidemic diseases. The US attack on Russia has similar consequences, and if NATO is involved, the same fate would await most of Canada and Europe. Let's take a look in more detail at the consequences of a strike on New York, with just one Russian thermonuclear warhead that has a yield of 800 kilotons. Remember, the Russian Satan has 10 of them. Let's say the epicenter of the explosion was in Manhattan, in the center of Times Square. During the first second, a fireball with a radius of 1.15 kilometers will cover an area of 4.15 kilometers squared. Everything inside the fireball will instantly evaporate. And by looking at this photo taken in Hiroshima, you can see what would happen to people. This isn't a drawing. It's a photo of all that's left of an old man with a cane. The nuclear blast from the Hiroshima bomb was so powerful that objects and people in its path left behind black shadows. The intense heat and light bleached the concrete around the shadow, but people who would find themselves in this fiery circle would be still lucky. They would perish without feeling any pain. It would happen faster than electrical signals travel through the nerves to the brain. Following the light wave, there'll be a supersonic shock wave. Within a radius of 2.02 kilometers or an area of 12.8 kilometers squared, the overpressure will be 20 pounds per square inch. 
Under such pressure, heavy concrete buildings are seriously damaged or destroyed, and the mortality rate is nearly 100%. In a radius of 4.71 km, or an area of 69.6 km squared, the overpressure will be 5 pounds per square inch. This pressure is enough to collapse most buildings. The height of the layer of debris will reach 10 meters, burying tens of thousands of unfortunate people under it. So, passing away immediately will be huge luck. There'll be fires in many places too. Then people within a radius of 9.7 kilometers, or an area of 296 kilometers squared, will receive burns of the third degree from thermal radiation. In a radius of 10.9 kilometers, an area of 375 kilometers squared, damage to the lungs from overpressure will occur. And let's not forget about the invisible and silent killer, radiation. Within a radius of 2.43 kilometers, an area of 18.6 square kilometers, the dose of ionizing radiation will be at least 500 rem. Such a dose is fatal within one month in 50% of people, and 15% of survivors will eventually pass away from cancer. The total estimated number of fatalities in New York will be almost 1.8 million people, and the number of those with burns, injured, and heavily irradiated would reach over 2.8 million people. However, Satan may not have 10 warheads of 800 kilotons each, but one super thermonuclear warhead with a capacity of 25 megatons. If this thing explodes over New York, almost 5 million people will be gone. The fireball will have a diameter of almost 10 kilometers. This will also create a zone of continuous destruction with a pressure of more than 5 pounds per square inch and a diameter of 27 kilometers. The diameter of the thermal lesion, burns of the third degree and above, would be 82 kilometers. But again, this is what would happen in case of a single strike. If the Russians decide to launch all their nuclear missiles, then the United States will cease to exist, and the same would happen to Russia. But what about the other regions that wouldn't be affected by a direct nuclear attack? Would life be possible there? First, background radiation will significantly increase due to the explosions of thousands of thermonuclear warheads. Nuclear power plants will make a big contribution too. After all, about 440 nuclear power reactors are currently operating on the planet, and this is thousands of tons of highly enriched uranium. The explosion of just one such reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine made an area of 2,600 square kilometers uninhabitable and now multiply this figure by 440. This is about 1,150,000 kilometers squared, and these infected zones won't be located in any remote places but near large cities. But then, a war involving the entire US and Russian arsenals could release up to 150 teragrams or 150 million metric tons of soot into the upper atmosphere bringing global average temperatures down to minus 8 degrees Celsius. In North America and Eurasia, temperatures will drop by 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, the levels not seen since the last ice age. And this will lead to a catastrophic reduction in food production and starvation that could wipe out most of humanity. In addition, there'll be no electricity, all power plants will be destroyed, no gasoline and no diesel fuel, oil refineries will be ruined, and if Russians hit the Yellowstone supervolcano with some kind of large thermonuclear bomb, it would provoke its eruption. This alone, without other nuclear strikes, can become a disaster for the United States, because it would suffer most from such an impact. On the spot where once was the National Park, there would be a huge hole, and extreme volumes of ash would fall on North America. Volcanologist Robin George Andrews believes that this would lead to problems with agriculture, the ash would clog engines, disable power lines, and pollute the water supply. According to his colleague, professor at the University of Cambridge, Clive Oppenheimer, the atmosphere would be filled with such thick ash that a volcanic winter could begin. If this happens, sulfur dioxide will block the sunlight, the continent will freeze and plunge into darkness, and this is not to mention Russian Poseidon nuclear torpedoes. In case of a nuclear war, these will be sent to the west and east coasts of the United States and, when exploded, form a tsunami that would hit the country's coastal infrastructure. Also, some nuclear strikes would be aimed at industrial, scientific, and administrative centers. Almost the entire industrial and scientific potential would be destroyed. 
In other words, survivors would find themselves in the Middle Ages. And even people lucky enough to survive would be plagued by diseases caused by high radiation background levels. As a result, barely any healthy offspring will be born. So, people who expect to survive a nuclear apocalypse on some tropical islands or in Siberia are deluded. Their life will turn into a struggle for survival. So within one, at most two generations or 50 years, humanity would either disappear completely or at least the world population would significantly decrease in number. Whatever the case, this would mean the end of modern civilization. The only chance of survival and long life would be given to those who started the nuclear horror, the political leaders of Russia, the United States, and some other countries. They've already prepared special bunkers located hundreds of meters underground with everything necessary for life. But this, of course, will only help if they manage to hide there in time. The bunkers are designed to withstand a direct hit from a nuclear weapon. According to a report made by the US Department of Defense Intelligence Service, Vladimir Putin has two huge bunkers. The political elite of Russia should hide in these super-secure structures if a nuclear war breaks out. Pentagon experts say the two bunkers can hold up to 10,000 people in total. One of these huge bunkers, at a depth of 300 meters, is located under the Kremlin. And another one isn't far from Lomonosov Moscow State University. The bunkers store supplies of food, fuel, oxygen, communications equipment, first aid posts, and other systems necessary to support life. People there can live for several months after a nuclear attack. Another important object, according to the American press, is allegedly located in the Ural Mountains. This is the legendary mountain Yamantar. Beneath it, there's a secret underground bunker, or more precisely, an entire city. Experts say it's designed for the simultaneous residence of 300,000 people. To compare, this is just about the population of Pittsburgh or Anchorage. In this underground complex, which is divided into so-called houses, all the necessary infrastructure has been created, communications have been connected, and life support systems have been established. It has all the conditions for people to stay in this underground city for at least six months without coming out to the surface. A similar infrastructure exists in the United States, but just on a smaller scale. So would this handful of people be able to revive humanity? Of course not. Almost all the knowledge gained by people throughout thousands of years of history will sink into oblivion. Nuclear war means the end of the current human history. Humanity will either perish within one or two generations, or be thrown back centuries. There will be no winners in a nuclear war. We must clearly understand this and realize that we've come too close to the edge of the abyss. What do you think about this? Can we prevent taking this last fatal step? Tell us your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on other videos about the most important problems that humanity needs to solve.